just want one pack. No, not one pack. Buddy, this is Praxis. Clearly, panic has started to spread across the United States. People are having fights over toilet paper, uh, which sounds kind of silly unless you're one of the people involved in the fights. But it's an illustration of what's coming to all sorts of other resources. And the one that's really disturbing to all of us, at least it should be, is food. People are going to start having the same type of situations around food that they have around toilet paper now. A lot of people have been asking me, people who are new to prepping, people who maybe knew about the idea of preppers and prepping, you know, doomsday preppers and all that, and now a lot of people are starting to realize, oh, this is why people were doing that kind of stuff, so that they didn't have to freak out and worry during a situation like this. If you're one of those people and you would like to get up to speed to yourself become a prepper so you don't get caught in those crowds, I got two things to tell you. One is, it's too late. <laughs> you can't, I mean, it takes a lot of preparation to get there. But the second thing I'm gonna tell you is don't worry whether or not it's too late. Starting now is better than starting tomorrow. There are so many things that you can do right now. You're never going to, you know, be as well off as if you had started this a year ago or several months ago, but there is so much that you can do right now that if you don't do it right now, your situation in the future is going to be worse than if you at least start some things right now. And one of the more critical things, like I alluded to earlier, is food. It's really important to have access to food, so if you get stuck somewhere and you don't want to go out or you're not able to go out, you can at least feed your family. Food, water. If you have shelter, those are the two things that you should be thinking about. Now, if you've seen like doomsday prepper kind of uh, TV shows and, and all that, I'm sure you've seen like freeze-dried food and all these special kind of prepper foods. Forget any of that stuff. You don't need to mess with any of that stuff. That stuff is, you know, it's specific to, uh, you know, lasting 10, 20, 30 years, and it's super expensive, and in my opinion, it doesn't really all, taste all that great either. You don't need to mess with any of that stuff, though, fortunately, because there is a lot of stuff that's right in your grocery store that you can run over to right now, and you can pick up. The price gouging hasn't happened on it. There haven't been, you know, like this breakout of violence in stores with people fighting over food. Right now, you can go out and you can make your situation two months from now, three months from now, so much better than if you don't begin right now. I know it's too late, but there's a lot you can do right now. So let's jump right into it. First, food and water. Let's start with water because it's really simple. You can go out to the store and you can buy a bunch of like, you know, the small plastic bottles of water. You can get gallon jugs of water. Now I'd warn you, I've had some of those big gallon jugs in the past and I've had them on my, on my shelf and a very high percentage of them have sprung leaks spontaneously and just started leaking all over the shelving. I don't know if that's an issue endemic to water jugs. Uh, it's not something that I've frequently, uh, you know, kind of stocked in my pantry, but on the couple of occasions when I did, pretty close to 100% of the time they sprung leaks. Now, again, that it's just my experience, but whether or not that is always the case or not always the case, you can get those, but there's another way of getting water and that is just putting it in whatever jugs. This just have orange juice in it. I wash this out, soap and water, shook it all around. I can fill this up with tap water and I know people will say, well, you should put uh, you know, some bleach in there to treat it. You should put iodine in there to treat it. Just water from your tap is gonna last a long time in a jug like this as long as you keep it in a cool place. If you're worried about that, I mean, get yourself a camp filter, one of those little uh, hand pump kind of camping filters that you can th just throw into a stream and you know filter the water right out of the stream. Certainly if one of those is, is capable of filtering water out of a, a stream where just upstream there's a coyote pissing in the, in the river, certainly if you take one of those and filter whatever water you have in here, even if you haven't treated it at all, it's gonna like whatever might possibly have happened to have started growing in here, you're gonna get it all cleaned out and it's not gonna be any kind of a problem for you. So just whatever, whatever kind of containers, as long as they're food grade containers, get them, put some cool tap water in there, you know, run the tap for a while, get the pipes kind of cleaned out. And by a while, I mean, you know, 30 seconds, you know, just make sure they're really flushed out. 
uh, get these nice and clean beforehand, fill these up, seal them, put them in a cool place, and get yourself a camping filter. If you're nervous about it, you can uh, filter anything that you want to drink out of this. If you need to use this water for cooking later on, it's no big deal because by boiling, you're going to kill anything that might be growing in there anyway. Water, done, taken care of. You don't have to worry about like special like, you know, cans of water or prepper water or anything. Just get yourself some water, put it in containers and get a lot of it. People need a lot of water per day. And by, you know, you can do the math on it about how much you drink per day and everything. I'm gonna leave that up to you. But water is something you definitely wanna have a lot of. And the reason you might wanna store that is what if the electricity goes out? What if your city's water supply is, isn't functioning? What if it gets compromised in some way? The workers who are you know, having their kids you know, pulled out of school, can't make it to their job, Services could slow down. Water is one of those services. So get some water in your house. Next one is food. Now I'm going to say I'm going to. I am a vegetarian. I you know eat a, you know a little bit of fish now and then, but I'm mostly vegetarian. You don't have to be. That's just the way that I do it. I actually got into vegetarianism because it's a great lazy way of living. Your leftovers last so much longer. Things are cheaper when you're eating vegetarian. I know there's going to be a ton of people out there that tell you that it's not. It's so expensive to be a vegetarian. That's true if you want to buy like processed packaged stuff that uh, you know is sort of like meat simulations and all that kind of stuff. I don't think a lot of this stuff is very healthy. It is very expensive, but if you're just like a basic vegetarian that uses legumes and uh, things of that nature to get uh, you know nuts also to get protein into your diet, it's a really inexpensive way of living. And like I said, the leftovers last a long time. When you have meat leftovers and you put them in the fridge, like, you know, if you haven't eaten that in a certain amount of time, it's like, eh, you know, <laughs> don't touch that. You're going to get yourself sick. But with vegetarian food, it's not really, it, it's nowhere near as dangerous to eat old vegetarian food. So I get into vegetarianism basically by being lazy. So I am, that doesn't mean you have to be, but a lot of my recommendations are going to be vegetarian based. Uh, the first one I'm going to say is, you know, just for general food, Get yourself some rice, and I don't mean like little packages of rice, I mean get a lot of rice. You can buy rice in 10 pound bags, buy many of those. I like to put it in these kind of containers, and you know, you could put it in old juice containers or whatever. These are great because you can kind of pour them out easily into a measuring cup. Rice is really great uh, because you can just use it for so many different things. There's a lot of energy and calories in rice. I know. Like now, a lot of people are like, oh, I wanna stay away from calories, but if you're hungry and starving, calories are actually your friend. They're a good thing, they give you energy. That's, whole, that's what calorie means, it's a unit of energy that's contained in something. You want calories and there are a lot of it in rice. Uh, if you're making rice, just think about it. Whatever amount of rice you put in, like say one cup of rice, put in two cups of water. You just double the amount of water that you put in. Uh, as far as flavoring, you can just throw some salt in, you can throw whatever in. One of my favorite flavorings for rice is this is pasta sauce. We use pasta sauce. Actually, I used this on pizza the other day. Whenever you're done using a pasta sauce container, there's always a lot of pasta sauce left on the inside of it. I always take these before, like after I've done using them, I take them, I put them upside down with the lid on and put them in the fridge. I, that way I know that's a, a jar that has some flavor left in it, some nutrition left in it, but it's otherwise empty. Uh, I just took this, I'm cooking some rice back here behind me. I just pour some of my water in here, shake it around, uh, dump it into the rice, pour a little more water, shake it around, dump it into the rice. Not only am I cleaning my dishes, so uh, well, these are recyclable, so that my recycle bin doesn't smell, but also I'm saving the flavor and the nutrition from there. So anything like that, you can just throw in with the rice. You can be really creative, uh, creative about it. Uh, in addition to rice, uh, a great, uh, another great carbohydrate is oats, rolled oats or non-rolled oats. Just buy large bags of them. You can get these things, uh, they're usually like in the ethnic section of the stores. Like w wherever you find Goya products, uh, you'll usually find like big bags of rice. I don't know why, the, is it only like non-Anglos that like big bags of rice? I don't know. But whenever I go to a grocery store, you can always find the big bags of rice in the, the area of the store that has like the Spanish foods, the Chinese foods, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you'll go there and get yourself a big bag of rice, get yourself oats. Oats are great for a cereal. You can put some sugar in with the oats and have it as a cereal kind of thing. Uh, there's, you know, cooking as oatmeal, cook it with milk. You can get dehydrated milk. You can put all those things together. Oats are a really great food. Beans are great. Obviously, you heard, probably imagine that coming, uh, you know, with me being a vegetarian. Uh, beans, any kind of legume is great. Black-eyed peas, pinto beans, lima beans, fava beans. I mean, any kind of beans that you can get. Um, lentils are great. Uh, 
There's any kind of legume that you can get, just grab it and get all this stuff dried. It's so much cheaper to get it dried. It's, uh, it stores so much uh, more efficiently if you don't have it all in cans and everything. And if you want to rehydrate any of these things, beans, you know, people are going to tell you you need to have this big elaborate process where you need to, you know, mix them with water and let them sit overnight and then pour the water off and then put more water in and then pour the water off and do this whole elaborate process. You don't need to do any of that kind of stuff. I mean, it's not like the beans are going to kill you. They're, they're allegedly supposed to, you know, give you more gas <laughs> to be like, you know, totally blunt about it if you don't do that kind of stuff. But, you know, in a survival situation, if you're just hungry, you can put beans in water and cook it immediately and you're going to get food out of it once they all soften up. So get yourself some kind of a legume, get yourself some kind of a grain like rice, get yourself flour, uh, ground up flour, get yourself big bags of flour. You can get a lot of distance out of flour. If you have rice and you have flour, you can make bread and you don't have to make leavened bread. I mean, you can, you could if you wanted to, but just flatbreads, you can make some flatbreads and you can use those to eat any kind of like, you know, different, uh, you know, seasonings or whatever you might have along with them. So flour, rice, oats, great grains, get yourself some legumes. And again, big bags, get dried stuff. It's so much cheaper that way. You're going to save a lot of money. In addition to that, uh, you can get yourself uh, things of, um, you know, nuts, uh, any, any of that kind of stuff. If you are, are into it, you could get like uh, dried meats, beef jerky, that kind of stuff. I'm not into that really because, you know, for health reasons and, uh, you know, vegetarianism and I don't like killing cows, <laughs> to be perfectly honest about it. But, uh, you know, if, if that is, you know, if that works for you, you can get those. Those things tend to be really high in salt. Another thing that you can do is peanut butter. You can get yourself pe uh, jars of peanut butter. They're going to stay shelf stable for quite a while. I've had jars that are several years old and they just kind of keep going. I, a lot of the, uh, the expiration dates on things, they're really more suggestions. I, I've never really had anything... Yeah, this thing says it has a couple months left, and I, I bought this quite a while ago. Uh, I really almost never have anything actually go bad. And if you have something that you're nervous about, just cook it. If it has botulism and you boil it at a nice rolling boil for five or ten minutes uh, of ro rolling boil, and this is, you can check this on, you know, uh, you know government... Uh, uh, you know, health administration websites, uh, boiling things for five minutes is going to destroy botulism toxin. Not the spores that create, uh, you know, that cause the botulism, like the, the organism itself, but the toxin that it creates, that's the part that's bad for you, the, uh, the boiling destroys that. So, uh, you know, if you're concerned about something, just boil it. In addition to that, Think about vitamins. You may not be able to get as much fresh fruit as you would like. You may not be able to get any fresh fruit. So having a supply of vitamins is going to be really handy to have. Uh, in terms of uh, you know fruits and vegetables that do store for a while, carrots tend to store for a while. Uh, onions are great. They tend to store for a while. Potatoes, there's a lot of energy in potatoes, and those tend to store for a while. Apples tend to do reasonably well also. You don't want to keep all those things near each other. You want to kind of keep those things separate, uh, especially like the, the onions and the potatoes tend to dislike being near each other. They like release gases that bother each other and make, make each other kind of uh, spoil earlier. So uh, you, know, you want to kind of keep the things separate and keep them all in a cool kind of dry place. Any medicines that you might need over the next six months, try to get them now. Cold, flu medicines, teas, if you get sick, grab that kind of stuff. Any kind of prescription medicines that you need, try to get Get that stuff ahead of time because there may be shortages or you may just not want to go outside. There are so many things that you can do uh, just by kind of brainstorming about like what are the things that I need on a daily basis and project that out into the future and grab that stuff for yourself. But again, if you stick with the basics, rice, beans, dried fruits, uh, nuts, things of that nature, I mean, they may not be your favorite food in the world, but if you're hungry and there's nothing in the house and you really don't want to risk going out because the situation outside is not looking good, you know, with contamination and virus and all that kind of stuff, having something in the house, even if it's not your favorite, might be a real lifesaver. Uh, so think about it now. Go out now so you don't have to fight people for it. Go out now before the prices are really high. Go out now while you can. Worst case scenario is nothing happens. Everything gets contained. I think that's really unlikely at this point. But this is the worst case scenario in terms of you buying this stuff is that everything gets contained and you ended up buying a bunch of food ahead of time and you're going to eat it anyway, which I don't think is that big of a deal. And plus, the fact that you bought it in bulk means that you saved a lot of money because it's cheaper to buy in bulk. So if you're new to prepping, don't worry. You're, I mean, you can never do as well as if you had started this 
before, but you can do so much better starting today versus waiting another week or two or a month or so because things, I would say, uh, with this present situation are gonna get worse before they get better. So do something today, go to the grocery store. When you go out, be careful. It's already, you should consider, uh, you know, team to be pretty much everywhere. So when you're bringing stuff back into your home, sterilize, clean things as they come in, or at the very least, just set them aside and let them sit for several weeks so that, you know, mother nature can take care of it, uh, take care of it for you. That's it. Good luck and welcome to prepping if you're new. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.